Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build. Now we're building a survival games map and we're doing this live on stream. We're doing it every night, Friday, between 5 and 8 p.m. So if you want to come and check it out, that's at twitch.tv forward slash yogscast. You can come in, have a chat, and just basically enjoy the build. But what I do is every week I put together a time lapse of what I've done the previous week so that you can catch up and it's a good way to get back into Let's Build videos. So, let's get back and continue making our survival games map. Last week, the first week, we built the kind of cornucopia starting zone. It's a small sky island, surrounded by grass and trees, with a cliff and a waterfall. And then in the middle is where we're going to put the spawn zone for the survival games map. So this is going to be the start zone, and it's going to be surrounded by islands with different themes. And what I'm doing this episode is completing another island. So the first thing I want to do is dig out an area to the bottom here and start to create a bridge to kind of get us over to the next Sky Island. Now we had a vote for which texture pack to use and I can't remember what we landed on but I think it might have been John Smith's. So this is John Smith's legacy texture pack and this is stone brick that we're using just to create a bridge that's going to bridge us over to the next island. And it's a pretty basic bridge to start with. Most of the things that I'm going to build for this map are honestly going to be quite basic because I'm building it on live stream and if I put so much attention to detail it will just take way too long. So what we want is just like a basic framework for a bridge and what I can do is in between live streams I can log on to the server, go onto the map and basically just change things up and add a little bit of extra decoration and spend a bit more time on the build. Now we're using a pretty simple setup here of slabs, stone brick steps, and then iron bars as railings along the side of the bridge. And then once we had a pattern for the bridge in our minds, and we decorated the starting steps, the opening ramp steps, with wooden blocks, I could then use the copy and paste tool to just basically take the design of the bridge and copy and paste it all the way over to where we're going to build the next Sky Island. Now I'm using pink wool blocks here as markers to work out where I want to be. And there you go, you can see me pasting down all of those extra segments of bridge. Now I made the bridge quite long, and then as soon as I was about happy with where I wanted it to be, not too long of course, I started to put down the framework for the second island. And you can see it here just appearing in the background. Now what I did was I dragged out long kind of like spider-like spindles of sphere blocks and then when I had kind of basic it's like a, like a tree in a lot of ways and once I had the framework of the branches I could then put large flat cylinders down on the edge of the spindles and these would create the large flat areas of land on which to base our second island and now with a few of those cylinders in place it was time to fill in the gaps with just the old uh, the old stone brush tool and paint down those stone circles now you can see a lot of stuff is happening in the background because a lot of these stone circle, kind of stone spheres, went down over a short period of time. So it looks like the islands just popped up out of nowhere. And as I've said before, it looks really ugly when you build everything out of stone spheres. You can really see when you kind of zoom back, you can see that, hang on a sec, this is actually just a lot of stone balls put down. So you want to use the smooth tool in World Edit just to smooth off the circles and the spheres to make them look a lot more natural. Oh yeah, now I wanted to do it out of stone, and what I wanted to do was, the mistake we made with the first island was, we only created about half of it before we added grass, but what you really want to do when you terraform a large island like this, is get all of the structure down first. You don't want to have to come back and add more structurally to the island, because when you do, it becomes really hard to add more grass, because you've already put down grass, and so adding more just becomes a bit tricky, and can be a bit difficult to do. So again, we're mostly just adding some flesh and uh, in, the, in the form of balls of rock, just fleshing out these cylinders around the edge, these large flat discs. And some of these are going to become little pools of water, little lakes. I think that's a quite a cool idea. Because I really like the idea of floating islands with water on them and that water kind of cascading down and falling off into the void of nothingness. 
And now with the island structurally complete, I went around with a smooth tool and just smoothed off some of those round edges. There were a few more things that I built just because I thought, hang on a sec, this whole island is a bit flat and a bit dull. There's nothing much interesting that's happening here. It's just different layers and platforms and hills and slopes. So I added, as you can see here, this cave. It's kind of like a, a shallow cave, but we can dig into the island and make it bigger when we come around to decorating. Now you can see a big stick of wool coming out into the void. And again, coming down to the other corner over here and putting down even more wool. And this is to mark off the region. This is so I can make a big selection of all of the stone in this area. And then once I got it selected, I deleted the wool. And then I overlaid the whole area with one layer of grass. Oh yeah, and you can see just the whole island come to life, spring into natural realization. Now I can still see a lot of obvious spheres around. So I did still have to come around and add some more slopes with the smooth tool. Also, you can see here underneath this stone arch, the overlay command doesn't put grass on blocks that have blocks above them. And that's a bit of a blessing in disguise because I wanted to come over to underneath that arch and add a trench in underneath the archway. Now I wanted to create a small pond here so you can see me just adding in some sand around the edge because when you add water, it, only, it really looks natural when you add a little bit of sand around the edge just to border it from the grass. Oh yeah, and I love that reflective surface with the shaders that we've got. And then moving over there in the background, you can see to the stone arch, I, I was digging away underneath it to add a bit of a trench and that just adds, maybe we can add like a cave system underneath there as well. Maybe even that could hook up around underneath the island to the cave that we have underneath the main tallest bit of the island. I think that'd be pretty cool to have like a cave network, maybe even like a mine underneath there. That's a pretty cool idea. But yeah, in the trench, I kind of dug out with balls of air and then put some dirt on the bottom of it just to make it look a bit more natural and I plant some grass too. And now mistakes were made when I accidentally put down a little bit of water and tried to fix water it and I basically put way too much water down and it lagged out the server quite badly. But then again, because I wanted this large flat area on top of this, the largest hill on this island, I came up here and what I did was I, I think I filled in the area with water and then I turned that water into grass and water is a great way to just level off an area because water kind of flows into gaps and recesses and then when you use like commands to change water into rocks, you kind of are left with like a level, nice even surface. And now again, it was time to come over to where the bridge connects to the island and basically just connect that up, plumb that in so that it looks like a proper kind of transition from island to bridge. Now we're using some pretty sweet mods for this uh, for this build. One of those is a uh, better foliage. And what that does is it makes the trees look kind of a bit more dense, add some detail and decoration to the side. Now you can probably look around here and see a whole bunch of pink wool. And you're like, well, when did you add that? And what is it there for? We put down this pink wool as markers in future because this is where we're going to put big medieval buildings. So all the areas of pink wool are basically places we're going to put big things like guard towers, barracks, maybe even like a castle or two and some walls and of course the graveyard where so many of the donators names are going to go. Now as always if you do want to make your mark and have your name be in this map somewhere you can uh, pop along and donate and I'll try to get all of your donators names into the map somewhere. Now, no promises. You might end up just being an empty name on a gravestone, an empty grave. You might even have like a nice little tomb. You might be named after a tree. You might have your own dog. But yeah, I want to get as many of your donators in as possible and, uh, and fill, the, fill the map up with your names because you guys have helped me create this by, you know, just, just hanging out there with me on stream and being in chat and basically just keeping me company in those dark Friday evenings where I just sit in my own little cave and, uh, and get to building. Now, why did we mark off the areas with wool? I mean, if we, if we know where we're going to put the castles, why does it matter? Well, because I want to come around with different trees. Now, I tried to use the trees that I used on the main island, but I wasn't quite feeling them. So I think instead I used these, I'm not sure it was acacia, but um, it might have been acacia. But yeah, we're using these kind of trees, these kind of flat, cloudy trees. And uh, what I want to do is I want to put those saplings around, but not too close to the pink wool. So I keep the areas with the pink wool clear so that I can build there in the future, build the castles and buildings without having to worry too much about having to clear out an area. And basically the way I did this was I just went around with loads and loads of saplings 
and, uh, and plopped them down. And as I was going around doing more saplings over time, the saplings grew. And you can just see here, the saplings come up in the background. Now, one of the big changes that we're going to make is to the density of the saplings. I think there's probably quite a few too many trees here. And, uh, and there is a degree of just, hang on a sec, we need to slow down, calm down, and flatten out the area a bit and get rid of some of these trees. Because I wasn't quite sure, because when you put down saplings, you have no idea how dense an area is going to be with trees. But yeah, after they've grown, you can see there's actually quite a lot of trees, and we might need to trim down on those. Oh yeah, and as you can see, as we sweep over this bridge, you get a good look at how the island has kind of come into fruition. Now, uh, like I said, a lot of the density of these trees is going to get cut down and removed. We're going to flatten out the area and make it, you know, a lot, a lot kind of cleaner and easier to get around. Because when this is a survival games map, you're going to want to have to run away from things and see your opponents. And if there's too many trees, they're just going to get in the way of your victory. Now, I think these pink blocks over here behind this stone archway are where we're going to put a big graveyard. So a lot of you guys are going to get your names over there. But this is definitely going to be the medieval island. But we'll have to wait and see. And as ever, if you want to have your say, pop along to the live stream and, uh, and maybe you can get my attention in chat and, uh, and say what you want. But I've been Stjin and this has been Let's Build Survival Games Part 2. So hit like and favorite if you want to see more of this because it always helps me realize that you know you want to see more. And uh, pop along to the stream. And until next time, guys, take care.